Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn how to segment your products in your Google Shopping campaign. We segment our products in our Google Shopping campaign so we can better target the products or the product groups. This helps us generate more sales and more profits by helping us better target who we're selling those products to. I'm going to show you how to segment your products and then the common ways that advertisers segment their products based on their objectives. Let's get into it. Let's go to this campaign we've just created and click it to view it at the ad group level. Now, we'll click into the ad group itself to show us the product group level. We see all products shown here as a product group. This contains everything in your feed. When we hover over it, we see how many products in it are eligible, limited, and not eligible. We have a video on how to fix all the issues that make your products ineligible or limited. I'll leave a link in the description to that video. Okay, so what we're going to do is subdivide this product group. I'll mouse over the all products here and Google will display a plus sign. Clicking it brings us here. Now we can sort through the products based on select information Google has from our feed. There are several ways that Google offers for dividing these products. This is all based on the information that's in your product data coming from Merchant Center. Category is the first one shown here. This is based on Google's own product category tree. Google will sign each of your products a category, but I must warn you that Google can often get this wrong. For that reason, I recommend that you never use this to segment your products. It's just not dependable. Brand will show us all the brands of products. This is a very common way to segment ad groups. It allows us to review the search terms and add other brands as negatives. For example, let's say you're selling Nike shoes. In this case, you may not want to show up for the searches that contain Reebok in them. Item IDs will show us every product because every product must have a unique item ID. Google also shows the title right after the item ID. This is helpful if you want to use this search function to find certain products. Condition simply divides the products based on if they're new, used, or refurbished. You may remember that product type is an optional field that Google gives us to create our own categories. That's very useful here because you can now use that to easily subdivide between your categories. Channel is for differentiating between local inventory and online. Channel exclusivity segments products by availability in one of the channels or both. We're not covering local ads in this course, but I'll include some links in the lesson brief further discussing this if you'd like to learn more. And finally, we have the custom labels. These, of course, were set up in the product feed or directly in Google Merchant Center. They're a fantastic way to further sort and segment your products. For example, let's say that you're selling t-shirts and you know that certain colors are more in demand than others. This allows you to have a custom label for colors. By subdividing the more popular colors out to their own product groups, you could make sure that they get higher bids. As another example, say that you've labeled in your feed which products are high margin and which products are low margin. You may want to segment out the low margin products so that you can bid lower on them than the rest of the products. There are limitless ways to use these custom labels for smart product segmentation. You'll need to think of the right way to do it for your own products. In the example I'm showing you here, we've added each product's price range to the custom label zero. So I'm going to subdivide this product group based on this field and check them all off to select them. I'm going to click save without editing bids. We're back to the product group view now and we see five product groups now. Four for the labels we selected to subdivide by and everything else in all products. Everything else means any product in the feed that has no custom label zero matching the above. Let's say I want this ad group to only show products that use my labels. Then it's important that I click on this edit button here and set it to exclude. This way, nothing but my feed items that have a matching custom label zero field will show an ad in this ad group. Finally, since we have this campaign set to manual bidding, I can show you how we might treat these product groups differently. For the product groups higher than $500, I may want to increase their bids so that I can give them more exposure. On the flip side, for my products under $150, I can lower my bid. Now, you can go further in subdividing each of these product groups you've just created as well. Let's click the plus button on this over $500 product group and let's subdivide it by brand. So these are all the brands that are in our over $500 product group. Let's select all of them to segment them further and click here to save. Now, when we come back to this view, we can open this up and see our subdivided groups. The advantage here is that we can review the performance of each brand at this price point. This can be incredibly valuable data over time to work with. Okay guys, that's how we segment our product groups in our Google Shopping campaigns. It starts at the campaign level, then ad groups within the campaign, then product groups within the ad groups. 
And finally, product groups within product groups. Google gives us the ability to structure our campaigns in this way because we know our products better than anybody. You can choose a structure and a way to segment such as category, bestsellers, profit margins, attributes like color and size, price points, and so much more. As you saw, you'll then be able to see how each segment performs based on the metrics. This allows us to know what's better generating profits and then to make further optimizations. If you'd like to learn more how to optimize your Google Shopping campaigns, check out our free Google Shopping course. It shows you everything you need to set up, optimize, and scale your shopping campaigns to over 100K per month. I'll leave a link to that free course down below. Now, take some time to think about how you should segment your products. Map it out on a piece of paper or in a Google Doc. Planning this properly is gonna pay off for your campaigns in the months and years to come. Now that you've segmented your product groups, it's time to launch your shopping campaign. We have a full video showing exactly how we launch shopping campaigns with a full pre-launch checklist. I'll leave a link to that full tutorial down below. Also, if you're a store owner that's already generating over 20K per month in sales for your e-commerce store and you wanna to scale to seven figures and beyond, book a time with my team and I. We use Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and conversion rate optimization to scale dozens of e-commerce stores every single month. I'll leave a link to our calendar down below. You can book a time with us and we'll talk through how we'll do this for your e-commerce store. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to click here for the next video in the free course and I'll see you there.